Welcome back to Florida Powerboat Club here on YouTube. This is Stu Jones with producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. And we're very excited to be bringing you our signature poker run event. That's right, guys. It's the Key West Offshore Poker Run, the 2022 edition, which celebrates the 30th year of this poker run, which has grown to epic proportions uh, now with 275 registered teams for this fall event. And before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our 2022 series sponsors include Blackwater Boats and their sister company, Deep Impact Custom Boats, and their authorized sales center, Plantation Boat Mart. Mystic Power Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, and their authorized sales center, Top Gun Yachts, Cigarette Dealer, Chief Marine Group, Midnight Express Power Boats, Big Thunder Marine, Concept Boats, Performance Boat Center, Mercury Racing, and Florida Powerboat Club's longest running sponsor, Nortec High Performance Boats. And in addition to our series sponsors, these feature sponsors joined us for Key West. They are Legend Marine Group, Wozencraft Insurance, DefcoTruck.com, Superior Communications, McLaren of Charlotte, Outer Limits Power Boats, Harden Marine, Double R Performance, Wilson Custom Marine, MTI, and Hallover Marine Center. Well, there's not many shows. We start off with the bad news first. And this bad news was Tropical Storm Nicole, which became a hurricane and, of course, uh, pretty much ruined the party for all of us, or many of us, at least in the earlier days. We kicked off things in Fort Lauderdale. I brought the Top Gun down to Bahia Mar Yachting Center and met a bunch of boaters there where we overnighted. And uh, we had to wait through on Wednesday and actually get a Thursday start. So we completely eliminated the Wednesday departure from the entire event. So that brings us to Thursday morning here at Hallover Marine Center, where the Fort Lauderdale group has spent an hour and a half on the waterways coming down ICW to rendezvous here with this group. So we left at 8 a.m. We got here about 9.30 a.m. And you can see that we've got a whole bunch of teams here at Hallover Marine Center getting things going as well as this construction crew. Oh, that was another curveball, right, guys? And that was the reconstruction of these boat ramps at Hallover Marine Center and Hallover Park. Uh, so that pretty much shut operations down here at Hallover Marine Center for the outsiders. And it was limited to really just the customers who are regular storage customers here at Hallover Marine Center. And now that they are managed by Suntex and they are running at about 99% capacity, you can pretty much be sure that's the way it's going to be going forward. So we're doing less operations here as FBC. We're still going to be doing greeting here on future events as far as big events uh, with uh, breakfast and coffee and uh, check-in here for the bags at Hallover Marine Center. But you can see, look how full this barn is. I mean, these guys are busting at the seams. So still offering services here, including shuttle services uh, for our participants uh, at least for the ones who made it and remember that a lot of people uh, jumped the gun and put their boats on trailers and headed down a day earlier there's leslie from team midnight express uh, we've got a lot of midnights going in the water today and uh, there's a brand new mystic uh, john tomino's boat uh, going in the water i do believe we saw this team uh, going on the bahamas run earlier in the summer of 22 and just a few tweaks on the gps to get this course plotted for the day Florian Sage, we, hear, we are here with FPC. Florida Powerboat Club for our 30th Key West Poker Run. Can't wait to see you guys there. How are you, man? Good to see you, good to see you. Whoa! Oh. As always, an incredible display of high performance power here at Hallover Marine Center before every event. If you see a lot of MTIs, well, of course, that's because MTI has a base of operation here, as well as Midnight Express power boats. And, uh, you know, with close to 500 boats here and many of them high performance boats, it really is quite the show. Obviously, a little bit lighter because of the incidents with the weather and with the construction going on here at Hallover Park. Uh, so that's going to change things as we go forward. Let's go, 2022, 
And of course, the usual greeting on the dock. A lot of people haven't seen each other in a while, maybe not since last Key West Poker Run. Uh, getting the numbers on the boats and getting loaded up, last minute tweaks, and of course, just a little bit of coffee to energize us for the day. Of course, we can't take it on the boat because it'll blow out. Looks like Brian Houchins uh, is ready to put those out, two outside motors in. That's right. <laughs> That'll come in handy. Another 900 horsepower just uh, getting ready to fire up. And uh, Michael Tandoy looks like he's going to hold off for a day. Remember, we also have a Friday departure, and a lot of boats are going to leave with us the next day. And now for the fun stuff, guys. We're down on the dock, and we've got our new location down here by the fuel pumps for the girls to hand off poker card number one on this blustery Thursday morning. But it is cleared up a little bit, and looks like we're going to have a decent day of boating. Gloria for her very first appearance with Florida Powerboat Club on the left. And Miss Sage, who's been with us at Orange Beach and Emerald Coast, as well as Orange Beach, where she won the crown and the title of Miss Orange Beach Powerboat Week. So we're kicking things off here with uh, Tammy and Jim Johnson from New Jersey in Team Backup, 34-foot Fountain Center Console, 2022 model, brand new. And why is she the backup? Well, that's because that big 50-foot Nortec isn't going to make it. She got a little wet this summer and a little incident uh, up north, but the backup looks like it's going to do the job just great with its triple Mercury Racing 300s and plenty of seating for all the crew. And becoming a very loyal uh, follower of this organization, Tori Robeson with his uh, cigarette racing 42X called B First. Let's listen to these 11 hundreds. I must say, I really like our little FPC girl team here on the dock. They've got a lot of energy, and that's the kind of enthusiasm that gets everybody excited and ready for a great poker run and an awesome ride from Miami down to Key West. And here's Hans Blix and his family all the way from Boca Raton. He couldn't get down from Boca because the bridges were all closed. We had to loan him my uh, Michael trailer, and the guys from Unique Marine put him in at the boat ramp in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, that way he was able to keep on running. And here's Ryan Harris with his 35-foot Donzi. He had a similar story where his marina wasn't able to put him in the water, so Brand X saved the day by picking the boat up and storing it for a couple of days so they could launch Ryan in time for the poker run start. And let's say hi to Team Hang and Bang, Mike Lacoste and his crew all the way from New Hampshire, trailered the boat 1,500 miles to come down and join us. Again, complications with the departure. They were going to leave out of Fort Lauderdale, but they changed that program and they came down to Miami. So here they are leaving from Hollowbird today. This is a brand new 2023 37-foot Midnight Express uh, Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs in a beautiful Nardo Gray. And I love that red interior. This is just a beautiful ride and a great poker run machine. And nice to see DJ Sarisa and his first mate, Amanda, joining us again. But this time, not in the Donzi. It's in their new 43-foot Midnight Express Open. And I think this was a good move for DJ and Amanda because they have a lot of friends. Uh, the friends aren't all aboard right now because of this uh, mishmash of this whole agenda. But they usually have about 15 people with them. So clearly this Midnight Express, compared to their 38-foot Donzi, is a much better platform for bringing the entire crew and it uh, looks like Amanda is just the first mate that you all want to have because there she is, ready to make sure the boat doesn't hit the dock and uh, running around like a little chipmunk. And one by one, they're all coming up to the dock and it's an exciting exchange here as uh, Paula Ackerman picks up the card from Sage and they are riding on this MTI 390X, which they love, joined by Robbie and his wife. Another team from Georgia, and we see this crew on a lot of our poker runs throughout the year. Well, indeed, the enthusiasm is contagious as we now catch up with Roger and Kathy LaRochelle, another team all the way from New Hampshire. A Little bit of a bobble there on the bow. We had a little wake action come in just as they were handing out the card. No harm, no foul, everybody's safe, and. Hey, if the dude fell in, at least he had his life jacket on. Uh, thumbs up, guys, for wearing those PFDs. 
and a close look at this very uniquely designed catamaran center console. Uh, John Clark, his wife Don, joining us uh, for their first poker run in this new boat, a boat that they built themselves. It's a Jaguar, and that comes from the the second generation of the Clark family being boat builders. First generation, of course, Jack, his father. You better watch out for this guy. He's coming in way too hot. But uh, hey, wait a minute. You can't get a card. You can't get a poker card. You're the organizer. Boy, t give it back. Give it back. And while all this is going on, of course, our helicopter is getting launched at the Pompano Air Park. That is Florida Coast to Coast Helicopters. So we've got our usual crew on board. Of course, uh, that is Joe Cotretti shooting video, as well as Jerry from Avatar shooting in the front seat, still photos, and they make a quick trip down to haul over. It's about a 20-minute ferry time down the beach, and you can see the weather is kind of hanging in there. The winds are dying down a little bit, but what you can't see is it's still quite rough out in the ocean. Quick shot of haul over there showing the construction, and of course, most of the boats have now departed from Hallover Marine Center. One of the last here is Stephen Barker and his 42-foot uh, cigarette uh, X Factor, and he admitted in his video bio that uh, some people were surprised that somehow FPC were able to salvage the event. And here's Robert Conti, his first time on a poker run with the club in his 1992 cigarette Top Gun. And Brian Houchin's going to have a smooth ride today. Well, of course, he's in a 50-foot MTI, 5 Mercury Racing, 450s. He's a long way from home, which is California. And here's another team that changed their agenda with the Wednesday cancellation now running on Thursday. Chris Stitch at Team Dirty Money came all the way from Las Vegas to join us. 2,500-mile trip on a trailer, and it's staying at Hallover for the winter months. And you got to love this team name. It's Poker Face. This is Zach Martin in his 32-foot Dominator by Sensation. It's got Mercury 496, eight shows. Did say that the ride down on Thursday was pretty rough, but it was worth the beautiful days in Key West. And here's Tory Robeson with his uh, 42X cigarette. He didn't have to travel too far. He's from Minneapolis, but spends most of his time around South Florida with the boat at Hallover Marine Center. And here's the money shot from our GoPro 360 off the back of the chopper. Wow. An amazing shot of the Bay Waters here, protected waters as we make our way to downtown Miami. And here he is now, DJ Sariza and his first mate Amanda and their crew riding on this Midnight Express 43. It's got four Mercury Racing 400s uh, off the transom, but that's going to change real soon. I know he's got some big power order. And the lovely first mate Amanda is just having a little uh, joy ride up there on the queen seat, enjoying the, the fresh air, the wind, and... The fact that the storm is on its way out of town. And it's John Stella and his crew on this Nortec 390 Sport. They're regulars on this event. They also like to attend the Miami run and the spring Key West poker runs. So they're getting pretty good at this Miami to Key West run. They could probably do it blindfolded. And some really spectacular images here in Miami as we make our way down through these intracoastal waterways. And the color of the water is just truly amazing. Uh, as we go through here now, this is the Venetian Causeway Bridge, downtown Miami. And a lot of the center consoles have to go through this section of bridge because it's got the higher bridge. And if you end up over on the east section and the bridge doesn't open, you have to sit there and wait for quite some time. Yacht Haven Grand uh, Yacht Center off to the right, that's the 395 Causeway. Way off to the left, that's the Venetian Marina, formerly known as Sea Isle Marina. Some of our teams stayed there overnight. Now making our way down through downtown Miami. That was the Miami River off in the distance. And, of course, Port Miami uh, there in the background. Some of the guys know that shortcut uh, where you cut out of the ICW channel and get over here to this uh, open water channel, which connects you with Virginia Key. And what that does is allows you to get off of your idle speed and get up on plane. And you can cut a couple of minutes off the trip by going this way, guys. But you don't really cut that much off. But... If you don't know where you're going, it is also easy to run aground because there's a lot of shoals over on this side. Uh, but as long as you've got a track and your GPS and you know what you're doing, uh, this is always another alternative to that very slow and boring idle speed uh, zone right in front of downtown Miami. And we got three or four boats up to speed now. Looks like uh, Craig and Paula Ackerman in their MTI 390X. That's Virginia Key over on the backside where they used to have the Miami Boat Show for about five years. And they're going to be closing in on the Rickenbacker Causeway here very shortly. And in hot pursuit, we've got that 37-foot active Thunder 
the blue and yellow boat. And then in the background, that's John Stella with the Nortec 390 Sport. I love this little story. Michael McClellan used to own this Active Thunder, sold it recently, and then his 50 Hustler wasn't ready. They had some engine problems. So he got Steve and Monica Barnett, who were the buyers of the boat, to come on the poker run. And here they are enjoying this Thursday run. And now closing in on Rickenbacker Causeway, and you can see the bay waters uh, on the other side of the bridge aren't that bad, really a tiny bit bumpy, but remember, this is going to be protected water all the way from Miami uh, down through the lower keys. The teams converging from the two different courses, those guys that took the shortcut across the bay are getting cut off by the guys who didn't take the shortcut, but as soon as they could cheat the speed zone, they got on it, <laughs> hammered the throttles, and here they are now funneling in through the Rickenbacker Causeway, which, by the way, guys, is a slow-speed bridge off-plane. Apparently, John Tomino knows, because he's got the boat off-plane and uh, pushing the throttles now as he heads towards our next checkpoint, which is Grove Harbor Marina. I'm going to call this the Zip Zap segment, and that's because our good friends at Zip Zap Power are friends with the YouTube channel that I think really got this whole uh, powerboat thing started on YouTube with the haulover uh, video footage and then here at Rickenbacker Causeway. Uh, so they were the pioneers, and they're giving us all of this content. One guy with the camera on sticks, another guy with the drone flying. So that's a lot of great video that we're going to get of all you guys because it's kind of a choking point on the course. Everybody's got to go through this bridge at Rickenbacker Causeway. And they started covering the Key West Poker Run probably 10 years ago when there weren't that many guys doing it. I remember that they got some great shots of the boats coming through the bridge here, and they were getting viral video coverage, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. So nice to have them on our team as we close in on Bill Melchon and his MTI 42. He's been on this event many times, uh, probably two or three, maybe four different boats over the years. I remember he used to have a cigarette Top Gun. He had a Renegade Center console, but now he's loving this 42 MTI. Now let's say hi to Kurt Watkins, uh, another Nortec 390 Sport, and another team from Boca Raton. But unlike uh, Hans Blix, he lives on the south side of the Camino Real Bridge, so he was able to clear the bridge and get on the waterways to head down and join us today. And here's a 48 MTI that's made the big leagues on YouTube and Instagram and coverage of a lot of these poker runs. It's uh, Matt and Sam Gabriel. Uh, as they bring Raging Bull up towards the Rickenbacker Causeway. And it looks like they're coming in pretty hot, considering it is a slow-speed bridge. Got a little glitch with the cameras here in our studio, guys. I'm sorry. Let's get these cameras back. One, two, three, and there they are. <laughs> okay, we thought we lost them for a minute. A Bermuda Triangle uh, as they now head off towards Grove Harbor for our next poker card. Guys, just want to remind you that Rickenbacker is a slow speed bridge. Well, Jimmy Harrison knows that. He's done it about 50 times. Uh, maybe not necessarily in this boat. This is his Nortec 390 Sport. Quad Mercury Racing 400 hours, of course, FJ Propeller, a company that all of us as boat owners have come to know quite well over the years. And it's one more time with Tammy and Jim Johnson in Team The Backup, 34 foot. Fountain Center Console with Triple Mercury Racing 300s. And they've had a pretty good run with the club. They did the Tampa Poker Run uh, just a little earlier, the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, and they did Key West a year earlier. So they've been very busy with FPC, mostly in their big 50-foot Nortec, but loving this new Center Console. And here we are now at our next checkpoint, of course, Grove Harbor Marina, a very busy place these days, and literally hundreds of boats of all descriptions in this basin. Of course, Grove Harbor right smack in the middle of all the action, and they have recently added extra docks. We're not going to see them on this event, but we will in the uh, earlier events of 2023. Not only is this a poker card checkpoint for all of the teams attending, uh, it's also a launching point for a lot of our teams who have stayed here overnight. They do have limited uh, truck and trailer parking areas here. Not that many, really. Of course, they do have regular storage customers here on site. And if you can get in here to stage uh, for the poker run, the hotels are directly across the street. We've got the Courtyard Marriott as well as the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, but I see about uh, 10 or so, maybe 11 boats in this basin. There's another handful here, another uh, five, six, seven boats here on the outside pier. I think about 25 to 30 boats overnighted here on Wednesday night. Uh, some people 
uh, just stayed over. They were going to go on the Wednesday run, but they couldn't go because of the weather. Uh, so here they are now getting ready to launch with us on the Thursday ride. And just to share with you guys a little bit more about this expansion project, which you're not going to see in this video because it hadn't started quite yet. But uh, in the early stages of the year, January, February, Grove Harbor uh, added a substantial floating dock addition of big Bellingham docks and uh, added about 10 or 12 big yacht slips. So they're really accommodating a lot more boats. And if they can just get more trailer parking, uh, this really is a fantastic location for people to stage from. Uh, even if you just come in here by boat on your own bottom and dock and tie up for the night and get a room here, this is on the doorstep to Biscayne Bay. So as a launch pad to get down into the Florida Keys, it really is a fantastic location uh, because you don't have all of those intracoastal waterways or any rough seas in the ocean to encounter. Got to check out that rainbow coming off that mist from uh, Jeb and Stephanie Bradshaw's 37-foot outer limits. Got some serious power under those hatches, guys. 1,200 horsepower aside. And one more time with uh, Jimmy Harrison and his crew on the Nortec 390. Uh, they've got this boat on autopilot as well. They've done this event five times now in a row since 2018 and that happens to be the model year of this Nortec 390 Sport. Couldn't help noticing that the docks are almost covered with water here at Grove Harbor and that never happens. You know, they've got a lot of height here but that just gives you an idea of how much of a surge there is right here in Biscayne Bay. Even though the eye of the storm has moved on and headed north uh, as we catch up to Will Kufus here getting his card on the skater uh, but just that that surge is setting record high water levels here uh, in South Miami, with the exception, of course, to Hurricane Andrew, which was 1992. And a bit of a coming out party for this brand new uh, Deep Impact 399 Ray Aki in Team Hammer Time. He's notorious for that bright orange Deep Impact 399, which he had for several years. And he's always got a big party on board, a lot of dancing girls in bikinis, and of course, that notorious smoke machine. Uh, which is a probably a signature of Ray. Uh, he didn't bring the spoke machine on this event. Why? He doesn't need it anymore. He had it built into the boat. Trust me, it's the truth. You're going to see it on a few episodes from now when he gets to Key West, and it is insane. And looking up here, the drone actually looking up and catching the helicopter arriving and obviously blue skies uh, on the horizon. But uh, that means that we're changing uh, the cameras up when the helicopter arrives. That means we got to roll, guys, and uh, we're going to land the drone and get the chopper rolling. Frank Sheelan just picked his card up, and it looks like that's another uh, Scarab boat registered to the Bradshaws pulling up. We're just on the final run here of the last few boats getting their poker cards. But when the chopper arrives, guys, you got to hit the throttles. you got to take advantage of that airtime, and it's going to be fast and furious as we head down through Biscayne Bay. All right, so as we finish off this card segment, uh, one more big thank you to the team at Grove Harbor Marina. Uh, they're a great team. They're there to help us, and they always do a great card checkpoint. So we'll have more of those poker card handoffs in our future episodes. But uh, back out on the Bay Waters here, everybody is just kind of pushing on the throttles, getting up to speed. You can see very choppy, and you don't really notice that when you're up high in the chopper. But now we're down here at water level, and you can see just how bumpy it is. You see white caps coming across the bay there with Miami as a backdrop. So you know that when you see that on Biscayne Bay, you know it's windy. And when it's windy like that, uh, you don't want to try to set any speed records because it can get really bumpy uh, for your crew, not to mention wet, especially for you guys in the center consoles. It's not going to be wet for Brian Forehand, though, because he's got his 52-foot outer limits all dialed in. Uh, this is a boat that's capable of going speeds well over 180 miles per hour. Uh, and you can see he's going to probably get there real soon. And now catching up with Jim Johnson one more time. Uh, finally, we got them going at speed. And what I said earlier is really just true. You really have got to consider your conditions. You can see how wet it can be if you're breaking water midship. And there's a lot of wind picking up that spray. You're going to get your crew wet. So the key is to slow down a little and manage the trim. And for these cats, well, you can erase everything that I just said because it's a completely different ball game if you're in a cat like this 
40 Mystic, uh, John Cosker. This is the factory registered boat, the 40 Carbon Edition, Mercury Racing 450s. Here's a boat that's going to go 90, 100 all day long and stay dry because he's right up on top of that chop. And a very seasoned captain at that, uh, Jimmy Harrison and Team FJ Propeller, the Nortec 390 Sport. Uh, been on this rodeo many, many times before and uh, obviously a seasoned throttle man and has spent some time in a race boat as well. Seems to be managing a comfortable cruise at about 60 miles per hour and getting some amazing angles from the tail section of this chopper with the GoPro 360, Jeb Bradshaw in that outer limits. Uh, so this is something that we could never do before but love the camera technology. Let's listen to this outer limits. And now at speed with Ray Key and his brand new Deep Impact 399 Hammer Time. And uh, getting a closer look at this boat and the beautiful lines and the interior. That's a Nardo gray exterior, gel coat actually, and a black bottom. I love the orange interior. This boat is going to be loaded with girls by Friday. You better stay tuned. And it's another big wave crushing center console. Mark Stoddard and his 42 Huntress. Five Mercury Racing 400 R's. That's 2,000 horsepower pushing this big heavy. 12 foot beam cigarette and she is taking this chop like a walk in the park. And now catching up with Kurt Watkins in his Nortec 390 Sport Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. That's a lot of power uh, for this 10 foot beam center console twin step. But look how Kurt's got this boat trimmed so perfectly. He's just riding, skipping across the top of the water and not taking any of the hit from those waves. And I can't help thinking that a lot of these guys we're seeing today are in their center consoles, but they've all been in the club many years, many of them with big high performance boats. Kurt's last boat was a Skater 388. And another cat that skims across the water, this is Eric and Ashley Matson, 32 foot Doug Wright, Mercury Racing 400 R. So here from New York. They've done this event many times before. Their last boat was a 28 Skater. And this might be an opportune time to welcome Doug Wright Power Boats to the mix. They have joined us as a Key West Poker Run sponsor for their very first time, and we expect to see a lot more of them throughout the 2023 season. And let's welcome Matt and Anne-Marie Raymond in their 48-foot Fountain Express. Uh, it's been here in a couple of different configurations. Once it had four outboards, now it's got five Mercury Racing 400Rs. Got the bracket done by Brian Forehand. This has been a great ride for them. Well, with those three diesel engines missing, they've got a whole giant cargo hold down below. And it's one more time with Chris Stitcher and Team Dirty Money all the way from Las Vegas. A little faster this time as he gets these Mercury Racing 1100 1350s up to speed. It's a 43 MTI Cat, which was trailered all the way from Las Vegas for the season. It's a nice vantage point for the chopper here as we get some high-speed flybys from the cruise. That marker would indicate that we're down here by Card Bank, and that means we're getting closer to the bottom of Biscayne Bay. And already you can see these conditions are starting to flatten out. And that's what many of you may have noticed by now, that in the northern sections of Biscayne Bay where it's more exposed to the ocean, it's always going to be bumpy and choppy up in those parts. But once you get down past Sand Key and Elliott Key, those islands uh, are kind of barrier islands, then you start to find yourself uh, in a much calmer situation where you've got protection from the ocean, and as you get further south, it's always going to smooth out. 
And that's exactly what's happening here for Hugo Prieg with his 36-foot Doug Wright. Mercury Racing 450Rs. And he's quite the adventurous guy because when he gets down to Key West, after a 180-mile ride from Miami, most guys would be happy to park the boat for a couple days. Now, now Hugo, he gets back in the boat and drives all the way to the Dry Tortugas. And from the cat to the center console now, this is Lance Rader in this triple engine Deep Impact 399. Why does it look so much different than Ray's boat we saw earlier? That's because it's one of the original 399s. In fact, probably one of the first of the Deep Impact 39 model. And remember when we thought that a 39-foot center console was really big? My, how times have changed. Brian Houchins has got this big SV50 MTI on cruise control, five Mercury Racing 450Rs, uh, and really got a small crew, four or five of them enjoying the ride behind that console. I can only imagine what it takes to trailer a big beast like this across the highway, and Brian tells me, well, they brought it 3,000 miles on a trailer all the way from California. Wow. Now, for me, that would be a white-knuckled ride, especially on the big hills. And we're going classic now with this 32-foot Renegade uh, 2002 model. That's uh, Kenny McNichol and Bailey Claremont teamed up to get this center console, got their ladies with them. It's got brand new Merc 300Rs on the back. Old school offshore with brand new Mercury Racing Power. Guys, I think there's kind of a trend going on here. I'm just saying. And we've seen a little bit of Bill Nelson earlier with his 42 MTI. Now we're going to run fast, and what a beautiful ride she is. A 2019 model, Quad Mercury Racing 400Rs. Love the paint and graphics. It's cool how the white spray of the water lights up the silver sides of the boat. A long way from home, they brought the boat 1,100 miles from New Jersey. It's the fourth time for Bill doing the Key West Poker Run. And if you haven't noticed by now, guys, there's a lot of MTIs on this run, and there are certain manufacturers that could take that lead as the Manufacturer's Cup for the most number of boats in the poker run. We're going to have those numbers at a future episode here as we cover this Key West 30th anniversary edition. And we have now arrived in Jewfish Creek, a very stirred-up Jewfish Creek, as you can see from those muddy waters. And that isn't just from all the power boats going through. It has a lot to do with the weather system that we've been dealing with for the last few days. Looking down there at Gilbert's, of course, one of our lunch stopovers today. But not for everybody, because on the Thursday run, we do have multiple lunch stops. We've got a manufacturer lunch for Nortac. We've got one for Cigarette. We've got one for Mystic. And, of course, everybody else gets to enjoy Gilbert's. We can always fit at least 70 to 80 boats here at this very rustic and pleasant stopover. I like to call it Gateway to the Florida Keys. Well, guys, we have just hit the 30-minute mark of this first episode uh, featuring the epic 30th annual Key West Offshore Poker Run. But we got some good news, guys. Altogether, seven episodes in this series. And in spite of all of the weather and the challenges we had to face to make this event happen, I can assure you that what you're about to see over these next few shows is absolutely amazing. And you guys can't afford to miss any of those shows, so be sure to subscribe to our channel, bang on that subscribe button, and double bang on that notification bell, guys. And you'll get an update every time a new show is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021, as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page. And you guys know who you are, and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.